You are a lawyer. Yes. A biker. Yes. A father. Yes. A husband. Yes. And my favorite, a nunchuck wielding beacon of justice. That is a quote from a client. Welcome, everybody, to this edition, uh, special edition of Our Nevada Judges. So I'm special. You are special. Well, what kind of special? And I'm going to tell you why you're special. <laughs> Wait, right? What kind of special are we talking I'm about here? Yeah, John. not that kind. <laughs> uh, not as far as education. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. All right. My mom's so, special. So. <laughs> all our moms think we're special, <laughs> yeah, right? There you go. So, our guest today is Stephen Stubbs. Stephen is, according to your website, okay, okay, which uh, uh, I I love the Bowtie Justice. Okay, that that that's that's awesome. Bowtiejustice.com. But according to your website, you are, and not necessarily in this order, but you are a lawyer. Yes. A biker. Yes. A father. Yes. A husband. Yes. And my favorite. A nunchuck wielding beacon of justice. That is a quote from a client. That's awesome. I so, love that. Nunchuck wielding beacon of justice. That's that's a awesome. A client told me that once, and, and I and I stole it. So, <laughs> so uh, the first question that I have to ask that's obvious: Do you really know how to use nunchucks? Oh yeah, I nunchuck dance. I've got videos. All right, cool. Yeah, okay, we then we can get started. All right. There we <laughs> and go. and I I believe that we're going to talk today about. Um, whether or not I have the right to tell a police officer, I'm not doing that, or no, uh, yes. or, or whatever. A request versus a demand is right. the focus. Okay. Right, the focus. And, and so, how do I know the difference between a request or a demand from a police officer? Because it, it, in my generation, we were taught to have respect for law enforcement, uh, regardless of what you see on TV. But um, if they ask you to do something, you do it. And, and that's not necessarily a good thing for you at times. Well, can, can we first talk about respect? Yes, please. Okay. Because one of the biggest mistakes that um, uh, anybody makes, especially a police accountability activist, right? Um, they call themselves auditors sometimes, to where they go out and they see if police, they usually videotape, and they see if police um, are, are doing the right thing. One of the biggest th mistakes they make that makes it almost impossible to file a lawsuit is they are not respectful. Um, even if you're right, even if the police violate your rights, your civil rights, and you are 100% correct, if a jury is not gonna like you um, because you're acting a fool, uh, then an attorney is not gonna wanna take your case. It yeah. would have to be an extreme case for an attorney to even look at it. Because the judge can say in, in a uh, motion for summary judgment, you are correct. Um, even a jury can say, yep, you are correct. But then the jury has a second question, how much is this worth? And if, if you're acting a fool, they're not gonna wanna give you money. They could give you a dollar, right? And an, a, uh, an attorney isn't gonna wanna take that risk with their time and years it takes uh, the amount of money they have to put up and right. spend as expenses, all these types of things, uh, if they're not gonna get paid back, at least for their expenses, um, even if they're fighting for justice, they, they want their expenses back. Um, and, uh, and, and so you really have to be respectful. And this actually goes both ways too, because as a police officer, if you're not respectful, it, it goes the opposite way too. A, a jury is gonna wanna give a lot more money and it could put your job on the line. Right. And so respect, um, is always important. You can stand your ground and you can respectfully assert positions and uh, and make sure that your rights are not violated. And then later on, you can certainly um, go to court. And that's also why it's important to videotape. So I, I, I have to ask this question because it popped into my head when you were talking about the, the uh, advocates or the, the um, uh, auditors. Yes. It, it sounds to me like they're it, it's almost entrapment in reverse. In other words, they're going out to try to see if they can provoke an officer into doing something wrong. Am I misreading that or? Um, it, it, uh, some of them do, okay. some of them don't. Okay. Um, I have a client, uh, Kelly Patterson. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about his case here, here towards the yeah. end. Um, he does everything right and he doesn't try to provoke anybody. Some people do go out and, and provoke. 
Um, and you know that's actually legal. And you know, the best thing a police officer can do is just ignore them, right? Um, because it, there comes a point where you realize, oh, this person is just you know trying to cause me grief, right? Um, and so, uh, but you have every right to act legally, right? Even in ways that might bring up some suspicion, because that's what they do. Right. They do something. They they <laughs> auditors try that, that try to provoke. Uh, it's it's a game of them trying to do something suspicious without actually breaking the law, and they try to that probable cause, reasonable suspicion. They they try to 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 dance that line a little bit, right? Right, and some of them do it very well and and get some lawsuits against police officers, and others don't do it so hot, and they end up <laughs> they end up on the wrong arrested end of the like too often, <laughs> right? Um, so um, so. So yeah, they, they do that. I, I would never advocate for that. Um, I, I do appreciate police accountability officer or, or sorry advocates um, that um, that do it the right way. Um, I appreciate them and, and I gladly you know take their cases. Um, but uh, but but yeah, it's it, be respectful, right? It, it's well, I, I I mean that it's important. That goes without saying. Well, I wish in, I wish it general. went without saying. I mean you know, <laughs> but it doesn't seem to. Yeah. Um, now, now let's let's go to the request versus. I, I, uh, I was just going to say let okay. let's get into that because I, I that's interesting okay. as hell. Okay, so you one hundred percent have the right, the constitutional right, to ignore a request by a law force law enforcement officer, if it is in fact a request. There's two United States Supreme Court cases. Colander is one. Um, and, uh, and that's the main one. Um, but there's two United States Supreme Court cases that says that you have the right to ignore a request from a law enforcement officer without fear of prosecution, okay. right? And that includes arrest, right. without fear of arrest. So that is well-established for decades, well-established binding authority for the entire United States um, if it is a request. Now, if it is a demand or a command, we might use those terms like synonymous. Interchangeably, right? Yeah. Um, if it's a request or if, if it's a demand or a command, uh, you do not have the right um, to not comply. Even if the officer is wrong, right? If he says you are being detained and he was wrong in detaining you, the very fact that he's making the command to stop or making the, the demand uh, to move to the front of my vehicle or, um, or identify yourself, right? Um, if it is a demand, you need to obey that demand. Um, um, you can verbally challenge the demand um, but you, you you do need to eventually obey within a, a reasonable amount of time. So so if an officer, and, and let's take a traffic stop, if an officer pulls you over and comes up to the car and says, may I see your identification? Okay, so- To me, that's a request. That is, that that is 100% a request. Okay. okay? The easiest way um, to distinguish between a request and a demand is to ask the officer. Just ask him, right? Is that you a mean request? just say, I'm sorry, is that a request or a demand? Yes. Really? And sometimes the officers don't answer that question, but you have the right to verbally challenge um, a police officer and their actions. And asking a question like that is something that a court will uphold in your favor 100% of the time, okay? If you politely ask, is that a request or, or, or a demand? You can even say, um, according to the United States Supreme Court case Colander, K-O-L-A-N-D-E-R, um, I have the right to ignore and refuse to obey a request. So, so this is important, right? Um, I need to know whether this is a request or a demand. Now, but, but whatever the officer tells you at that time, you need to take it at face value. You can challenge it later in court, right? right? But whatever they say at that time, take it at face value. If they say stop, you stop. If they say, um, you know, I, uh, I identify yourself, you have to state your, your legal name. But, right? uh, but, but that sounds like a demand. If, if it's something like stop or identify yourself, as opposed to may I see this or, or would you mind stepping out of your vehicle or something like You're that. You're right. Is it, that, I, I, the, I'm just, I'm trying to clarify in my own head. Absolutely, and communication needs to be better okay. um, on all sides. All right. Um, but 
there are times when an officer does not have the right to command or demand anything. They have to have reasonable suspicion, okay. right? Um, but they try to um, tiptoe on that line, right? And uh, they try to say it in a way to where they're really, you know, requesting, but they're they want it to come across as a command or a demand. And that and that's when you can say, excuse me. Is this a request or a demand? Exactly. If they right. say stop, you know, clearly it's 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 a stop, right? Yeah, right. Um, if they you know ask you a question, I think that is also you know clearly a request. Right. But if you want to be safe, you can just ask. Right. Right. Now the law is you know if this was to go before a court and the court was to say, oh, is this a request or is this a demand or a command? Um, it's a reasonable person standard. You have to look at the totality of the circumstances. Right. Um, everything going on, like for instance, if there's 12 police cars there versus like one police car there, what would that reasonable person believe that they can do? If all the cars like surround them, right? Then the language is in a different context versus a police officer walks up to you in street clothes. Right. right? I'd be laying on the ground, flat out. Right. I'm right. not moving. <laughs> but you have to take the totality of the circumstances. Right, right, right. You take, you take everything that's going on right how many police officers there everything else everything that's going on um even the location sometimes right um and uh and then you even take the tone of the officer into account right like how they say what they're saying and what would a reasonable person believe would a reasonable person believe that they can um refuse right without some kind of a repercussion and, okay. and the officers know this, right? This uh, is part of their training? Do. It's part of their training. Okay. And then um, additionally, the actual words. Now, this is actually the biggest thing. The actual words they use uh, determine whether it's a, a request or a demand. Now, recently I got a $300,000 settlement um, in, in a case. Uh, the, the guy's case is IMS, I-I-A-M-S. Um, uh, um, and it was in federal court. And uh, this was a, a central issue in the case. And we got a $300,000 settlement because the police acted wrongly. And uh, one of the big parts of the settlement was uh, the police um, entered a settlement to where uh, Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department entered a settlement to where they have to change their policies and training in writing. And they have to do uh, training every year for five years um, to make sure that you know it, it sinks in. Right, and then that was followed up with a court order. So we have a court order, and we have um, this settlement agreement that can be enforced. Right, um, I actually brought um, the attachment that includes um, uh, everything involved in it. Now there, there's a lot involved in this. Okay, um, for instance, uh, can a traffic stop be prolonged? The answer is no. Yeah, that that I, I, well, you that interests me and. and but go ahead. Can you explain yeah. that? What so that means? So you get into situations to where a police officer will um, will pull you over for traffic, but then want to do other stuff. Right. Right. Do you mind if I search your vehicle? Well, yeah, that type of thing. Right. right? Um, you know, and they can they can ask that question. You know, they and, and if you com if you uh, agree to it, that's that's a whole other story. Right. But in a situation to where um, they're trying to extend their mission. Right, and that's what the, the court cases say. Um, they cannot prolong, even for 40 seconds. Um, if you simply give them your license, registration, and insurance, and, uh, and say, I don't answer questions, you know, can we please just get along with this? That, they're done. All they, have, all they can do is they can uh, reasonably go and take care of uh, the traffic and they have to let you go. Right. Now, in the meantime, if somebody else is you know, going to bring a dog and search around the car, or sniff for drugs or anything like that, if, if, that, if that's going to go on, um, you know, they can do that, but they need more than one officer, right? Um, and uh, they're not allowed to extend the stop by, um, by uh, you know, running you through um, extra, um, rather than just look for wants and warrants and regular traffic stock like they like they would, uh, they're not allowed to extend it to run you through extra things, right? That aren't part of a of a of a normal ordinary traffic stop. Okay. And they're certainly not allowed to um, to uh, ask or, or even ask. Uh, this case says, um, ask your passengers for their identification so they can prolong the stop by checking their IDs. So so if I'm pulled over for 
going through a red light or, or making an illegal left turn or something like that, and I have two or three other people in the vehicle, the officer does not have the right to ask for their identification? No, he doesn't. Okay. That was made very, very clear, and it's in Metro's training. So the training that we fought uh, to have. Um, now the only wait, time- Wait, 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 I gotta stop you there. This particular training that we're going through right here, this, this, this portion, this is something that you caused to happen? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Good man. Through a, through a lawsuit that this, this year we settled that the lawsuit. The lawsuit that you were talking about earlier. Uh-huh. And nice. they are required by court order to um, circulate this, this document to their officers every year for five years. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they read it. Yeah, well, they've received training on it, right. so so they're re they're required to be trained, and you know they'll be held to this, right? Right. Um, but they can't prolong these stops. Okay. Um, the other part, actually, that we're here is: are passengers required to identify themselves during a traffic stop? No. And the very reason is, is that that um, that you don't have reasonable suspicion of the passenger if it's a traffic right. stop. Right. The driver is driving. Yeah. If they did something wrong, that's the driver, not everybody else. And the passengers had no control over mm -hmm. what was going on. In Nevada's duty, duty to identify statute, uh, you, it is required to have reasonable suspicion to, uh, to demand um, in any kind of, of identification um, or that someone identify themselves at all. Um, and you don't have that unless you have, you know, separate reasonable suspicion. Right, like if you got a needle in your arm or something, yeah. right in the back of the car. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Or, or they, they smell alcohol. Or, or yeah. Or, they, or well, see an open container. A, or, open container that right. will do it for the for the passenger. Right. right? So unless you have um, separate reasonable suspicion for the passenger, um, uh, they have no right to demand their ID. And this court case has actually said, and their training says, that simply asking the passenger for their ID is prolonging the stop. So you can't do that either. Wow. That's in their training. That's, that's, that's in the case that we, uh, that we won in federal court. But here's the part that we're gonna go back around to. Yeah, please. Okay? There's a small section on here where it's request versus command. In the IMS case, it became an issue of whether what the officers were saying were a request and a command. And, um, and so as part of the settlement, we wanted communication to be better. We, we Actually, all sides did, okay? And so we agreed on this language. It says, request versus command. There is a clear difference between a request and a demand. Requesting language should be in a tone that a reasonable person would interpret as a request and should end in a question mark, right? Um, examples, demand, identify yourself. Request, can I have your identification? And so that's, that's what the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department is being taught. They are being taught, if you want it to be a request, make sure it has a question mark at the end. If you want it to be a demand, make sure it has a, a, um, a period or an exclamation, exclamation point. Exclamation, yeah. Either one, um, but, uh, but that's, that's important. So if you're asking, how do I know whether it's a request or a demand, number one, just clarify, ask. Communicate well with the officer, be respectful. Excuse me, I, I need to know if that's a request or demand. If the officer doesn't want to tell you, just say, look, the, the Supreme Court has said in Colander that I have the right to ignore a request, right? So, so I need to know, I need you to tell me whether this is a request or demand. And whatever they say, you go along with, right? right? Um, you can challenge it later, right? Um, uh, if they, you know, fruit of the poisonous tree, if they search and find something and it was not a, a proper stop or a proper search, you could throw out that evidence, right? Um, you know, you could even, um, uh, if, if they step over the line, you know, to the point where it causes um, civil liability, you can file a civil rights lawsuit. Um, of course, not if you're, you're being a jack wagon, right? right? But, but um, all that can happen. But at that point, you need to uh, respect that, that, that officer. Now, you have a right under the First Amendment to verbally challenge. I say verbally. You do not have a right to physically challenge an officer, yeah. right? <laughs> you do not. If they put their hands on you, right. go with it, period, right? They may handcuff you. Go with it. You have the right to verbally challenge a police officer. Um, and that's what you're exercising when you say, excuse me, officer, is that a request or a demand? Right. And it doesn't matter if they're impatient, right? 
uh, and if they don't want you to ask that question, you have a First Amendment right to ask that question, right? Um, and in fact, the Kelly Patterson case we talked about, the, the judge found that what the dialogue was uh, protected by the First Amendment that happened between him and the officer, because um, he did everything right. And we'll talk about that case. You know, but, and, 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 and it brings up the question in my mind is, are all of the Metro officers at this point in time wearing body cams? They should be. I, I, I know they should be. Are they or? It's sometimes it's not running. Okay. Right? Look, always, always videotape when you can. Yeah. Right? Um, that protects everybody. I was actually saved by someone videotaping an encounter. Right? I was in a situation, um, you could look up my arrest on YouTube, just Stephen Stubbs arrested on YouTube. You I know, pull it was it cool. Up. <laughs> pull it up, right? I was in a situation where as I was standing with my client um, when, um, when gang task force showed up, he was, a, he was a Christian minister, by the way, biker for Christ, right? When gang task force showed up and ordered me to leave and I refused. Um, and I was 100% within my rights and I did everything correctly. However, the sergeant decided that she was going to write up a report and submit it to the district attorney full of lies, full of things that just did not happen. That if they were true, I could have lost my law license. Right. I could have been convicted of obstruction and lost my law license. And it was, it was, all, it was all baloney. However, one of them videotaped the encounter. And uh, there weren't body cams at the time. Right. But somebody videotaped the encounter. And because they did, um, I was able to beat the charge and, uh, and it really saved my law license and, and save, a, save a good part of my livelihood, right? In, here in Nevada, are we allowed to do that? Are oh, there wow. situations oh. where we cannot videotape an officer or officers in the, while they're doing whatever it is that they're doing? Okay, Fortis v. Seattle okay. is, is the case. It's a Ninth Circuit case. It's good the entire Ninth Circuit. Half of the circuit courts have, uh, have established a case establishing um, uh, that there is a constitutional freedom of press, First Amendment right to film officers. The Ninth Circuit whether is one or not, of them. Whether or not you're part of the press. Right, it okay. doesn't matter okay. if you're part of the press. Right, right. it doesn't matter, okay. okay? So First Amendment right. In the Ninth Circuit, that's Fortis v. Seattle, and this is what's important. You have the right to videotape a law enforcement officer performing their official duties in public, okay? Law enforcement officer, official duties in public. You have to have all three. Okay, so in my house, is that still considered in public? Well, that that's fine because you, that, that that's still, you still have that right in your house. Okay, okay, I, house. I, I, I just. However, if you're in somebody else's house and they say, I don't want you to videotape. That, that I understand. Right? Right. That's not public. Right. Right? So, um, so that or the or or your your in a grocery store or something like that, and the manager from the store says, "I don't want you filming that." Yeah, you have to stop. Yeah, okay, that's private. Yeah, got it. That's okay, private. so did um, you get that? Everybody got that? Okay. Okay. So, um, other than that, it's a right. It's a hundred percent a right as long as you have those three things. Okay. So, a police, a law enforcement officer performing their, excuse me, official duties in public, if they're with their kids off duty, you don't have that right. Yeah. Not at all. It, it, it's, it's just not there. Okay. Um, so, um, so just, just obey, obey those, those three uh, things. Yeah. No, no, no. That's great. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. So. Now, now ag again, going back to this, you have the First Amendment right to challenge police officers. And the main case here is Texas v. Hill. It's a United States Sup Supreme Court case. Um, to verbally challenge police officers. However, do not use fighting words. Now, there's a lot of cases that deal with fighting words, but basically, if a reasonable officer would take what you said as a threat, right? Um, those are fighting words and those are not protected by the First Amendment and that is not a proper challenge. All right, you come any closer, I'm gonna kick your ass. That is not a good thing to say. Yeah, but... Um, <laughs> Um, but I mean, one guy, I just saw this on a video, um, one guy who was actually egging on the police um, and he was, I guess that trap in reverse, whatever yeah. it was. Um, he kept on telling these officers, um, um, I wanna, I wanna uh, cook some bacon tonight, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, it's like, but it, the way he said it too, it, it's like, 
I would personally think that was a threat. Right, right? yeah, I, I would too. And I think a court would as well, Yeah. right? But he's trying to like um, tiptoe on that line, right? And he's trying to provoke the officers, right? The officers actually, um, to their credit, they just ignored him and, and um, if I was that officer, I wouldn't have ignored it. If you said something like that, right, to where, not just calling them pigs or, right. or bacon or whatever, not right. just that. It's the fact that you would do something to that you know, right. Yeah, no, no, no. I get that. that. Yeah, that I get pig, the difference. Right? You know, uh, I'm going to roast a pig tonight or something. If you said, I don't say things like that, right? Um, but but if you were to say something like that, if a reasonable officer would interpret that as a threat, that is not protected by the First Amendment. And, and I think that that's something that um, the public needs to understand as well is that we expect certain things from our law enforcement officers. And we should, in turn, act the same way that we think they should. That, that yeah. goes back to what you were Just talking respect. about, the respect. Just respect right. both ways. You know, right. this guy's doing his job. Now, maybe he's a jerk, but so is the guy who, you know, gave me my coffee this morning, you know. But he's still doing his job, and as long as I'm not going to be there stirring up shit, we should be fine, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Now, you, you have the constitutional right to be as much of an a-hole as you want to, to the officer. Right. You have that right. I I, I, um, I had heard that that just because you say screw you or fuck you or something like that to an officer, that is not grounds for them to come and beat your ass. No, it can't be, and it can't be grounds for for anything else. Right. right? It's un, unpopular speech. It's 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 the pivotal part of the First Amendment, right? If it's if it's popular speech, it doesn't need to be protected, right? right? And there's there's a case, uh, USA versus Pucha, P-O-O-C-H-A, in the Ninth Circuit. The Ninth Circuit actually has uh, the most liberal of uh, First Amendment protections. Um, I mean, that was a case to where it, there was a bunch of hippies uh, at a federal campground, and one of them had a, a, an arrest warrant. And so uh, police came in to execute the warrant, and then they were surrounded by a whole colony of hippies. I mean, a whole colony. Um, and they were saying the nastiest of nasty things, um, so much so that the California courts actually found them guilty um, of disturbing the peace for it. And it went all the way up to the Ninth Circuit, and the Ninth Circuit said, oh, no, it didn't go to the level of fighting words. Yeah. And because it didn't go to the level of fighting words, it is protected speech. Maybe may reprehensible, maybe horrible, but it's protected. Yeah. Right? And the police cannot um, prosecute you or, or act or act on that. So so don't get me wrong, the First Amendment protects that. However, going back to what we talked about at the very beginning, um, that means you'll beat you'll beat the rap. That means you, the court should not prosecute you for that uh, however it's <laughs> no attorney is going to want to take that case right um because if if you if your words would inflame a jury then yes you will win the case great how much money are they going to give you yeah right um it's that's just the way it goes right um and in the federal court which all civil rights cases get to the federal court in a federal court it has to be unanimous, unanimous. Every one of those jurors has to agree. You get one juror that's offended and holds out, you're in trouble. Yeah. And so attorneys aren't gonna take that risk. They're not gonna take that risk with their time. They're not gonna take that risk with the money they have to put up um, to, uh, to, to prosecute yeah, the lawsuit. Because you, you're, you're fronting all those costs. Yeah, generally so, the attorney fronts, yeah. fronts, fronts all the costs. Um, now, there's also a case, McKinney, um, in, the, in the Ninth Circuit. And that's a case to where um, somebody was writing chalk and the officer told them to stop, right? Um, the, the officer actually had no right to, right? That was later determined that he, was, he had First Amendment protected activity, right? Um, but he delayed, he finished writing, right? Um, and he delayed obeying the officer's commands. Right. Okay? Um, However, he delayed it because he was doing a First Amendment activity, and then he verbally challenged the officer, right? Um, and because of that verbal challenge, because he didn't act fast enough for the officer, the officer arrested him. And, um, and they actually defeated qualified immunity in that case. Um, the court said no, right? That is not probable cause of obstruction. 
um, if you simply delay and you eventually um, obey a command, right? So you have the right and you can still sue as long as you do things uh, respectfully. You have the right to verbally challenge what's going on and, um, and you can verbally challenge it and that's protected under the First Amendment and specifically in the Ninth Circuit that's protected. Um, and and that's, that's actually what happened um, with Kelly Patterson. I, you keep mentioning Kelly Patterson. Is that something that we could talk about that case? Yeah, is we can that, talk about the case. It, 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 he's a client of yours, is that correct? He is, but nothing that I'm saying is confidential. Okay. You know, it's all, all public right. record, and um, and the case is in a municipal court before a judge. Good, so because I don't want to get called in for a deposition or something. You're some fine. Shit. No. You're fine. <laughs> they wouldn't have to. they just look at the video, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right? You could, put the, you could put the video into evidence. Okay. So, so Kelly Patterson, he is um, a police accountability activist, okay. right? Um, he's actually an activist for a lot of things. He feeds the homeless more than anybody I've ever known, wow. right? He's a part of this this um, this group called Food Not Bombs, right? To where they are anti-war, um, and uh, and they they are pro police accountability, right? He also uh, writes for Cop Block in Nevada. That's a cop uh, block. Cop Block. Okay. It, it's a website that the police hate. And they don't like him either. Yeah. Um, but what it does is it is it shows the worst part of police officers. Um, they videotape or they get video of police officers not doing their job correctly. They write about it. They post the videos. They put it on display, and uh, and the police really don't like it. Um, and so uh, so he's a target, and he's already won two federal lawsuits for being a target. Right. Uh, one of them, he just won his case at the Ninth Circuit on a. a another chalking case. He was chalking and he was arrested for chalking on a sidewalk. Um, and uh, and he, yeah, he defeated qualified immunity on that and they'll either do the settlement or they'll they'll go to uh, go to trial on that one. Sounds um, like I should invite him in. What? Um, to be a guest on the show? Maybe you should. Yeah? Maybe you should. Um, he, um, yeah, he's, he's on a bunch of podcasts. He does that, he does that. So um, the, the other case, which actually I was the attorney for, um, he was just at Fremont Street and he was videotaping a, an arrest and it was actually a, a good arrest, right? It wasn't, any, nothing was wrong right. with the arrest, but he was videotaping it and one of the police officers got upset that he was videotaping, told him to move along. He said, no, I have a right to be here. He was within a reasonable distance, 10 feet, just take 10 feet back, right? And if the police, you know, tell you to go back a little more, you know, as long as it's around the 10 feet, you're just, just do it, right? That's why they make zoom lens. Right, so, <laughs> so um, but, but he was far enough away and the officer then like challenged him, was just like, what, are you stupid, right? And he's just like, no, are you stupid? And then the officer got mad. Um, yeah, I've got, I got the video on my but wait, wait, wait. channel. That was a request, not a demand, right? right? What? Are well, you he was, stupid? No, he was no, actually I'm, he was actually demanding he leave. He said move along. No, no, no. But I'm saying the question. What are you stupid? That's right. That's right. That's right. Right. A request for information. Sorry. Right. It's a question. See, I pay yeah. attention here. There you go. Yeah. Um, so what the officer did was he threw him in the street and then arrested him for being in the street. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we we got him one hundred and twenty thousand dollars for that. Wow. Right. So, um, so, so he's no stranger to this. He does this all the time. Well, this time he's riding his bike and he sees somebody that, um, that is uh, pulled over by police for not having reflectors on his bicycle, okay? So he stops, he's more than 20 feet away. He's probably 30 feet away. He's a long way away. And he just stops and he's just videotaping. That's all he's doing is he's stopping and he's videotaping. He's not doing anything else. When an officer pulls up um, and actually the film shows all requests, right? So. Um, could you please come to the front of the, the come to the front of the police car, right? Um, but it's it's all these requests, and he verbally challenges the police officer. Why? What what am I being detained for? It wasn't a, a legit detention. Uh, none of those things. They actually demanded that he identify himself, which they didn't have the right to do. Um, you know, we're certainly gonna you know uh, you know take some legal action to make sure that that you know metro changes their training again on that right, right? um but uh but what's important here is that he was respectful the entire time um i i hope you'll actually play you know the video of it right, right? I'm, I'm, yeah i'm sure you know, we can alex that. can post right. post that i can right. get it um at the end so you can actually see <clears throat> but um but 
everything the officer said, and they even testified in court, everything the officer said was a request. It, there was no demand whatsoever, and the officer testified, no, nope, that was a request. Yep, that, that was a request. Uh, we went through every single thing she said, and it was all requests um, with what was at issue there. And so, actually, the city attorney took the position that because she, um, she <clears throat> wanted um, it to be a demand and was just trying to be polite, like her intent that nobody can read her mind, right. that he had to comply, and they, they charged him with obstruction for that. Right, and um, and Judge Kearns, um, you know, to his credit, he's, he's he's a very good judge. Judge Kearns dismissed the charge and said, "No, that's not, that is not the 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 test." Um, of course, there's the Colander case, and and the judge was, I'm sure, relying on that. He didn't yeah. specifically say it, but I'm sure he said, "No, it's circumstances what a reasonable person would say." Uh, the intent of the officer has nothing to do with anything. And 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 and. Uh, which brings up a question for me is that um, asking an officer, "Am I being detained, mm -hmm. or am I being arrested, or uh, you know, if they if they say um, if, if you challenge them mm -hmm. for for you know, as you say, and you're doing it in the right way, and the officer says, you know, stay here, and walks away, okay, and then would that be appropriate to say? Officer, am I being detained? Yes. Okay. That's a great question to ask. Okay. Am I being detained? A great question. Right. And if he says, stay here, he yes. answered your question. Yeah. Well, right. I, I mean, to me, that's a command. Yes. And at that point, um, any court would see that as a command to stay there. And if you're not free to leave, you're being detained. Right. Right. Um, and so, um, so, but asking those questions, that is your right. Okay. Now, what's kind of interesting with the Kelly Patterson case is there's a 2015 law um, dealing with prosecutors when they take what they what's called a frivolous position, and the Ninth Circuit has defined a prosecutorial frivolous position as any time um, a prosecutor takes a position that is uh, foreclosed by binding authority. That means a a court who says something and they are bound by it. A lower court is bound by it. Perfect right. example is United States Supreme Court case, right? Right. Everybody else is bound by that. Ninth Circuit, if you're in the Ninth Circuit, you're bound by that. If you're in the Tenth Circuit, you're not. But in the Ninth Circuit, you are, right? Nevada Supreme Court, anything they say for all of Nevada, not in California, but in Nevada, that's binding, right? So if, if the position that the prosecutor takes is um, foreclosed by binding authority, you actually get attorney fees. And I filed an application for those attorney fees. Um, I, I, I filed it. Um, we've, I, the, actually, today we got notice that the hearing was moved to um, August 31st. So August 31st, we're going to argue it. Um, and uh, and I, I believe I set it all up because uh, I set it all properly under the application statute. Right. Um, because the, the city took the position that um, that Mr. Patterson um, uh, had to obey requests. Um, and they specifically took the position that because the officer intended it to be a demand, that he had to obey it. <clears throat> and uh, Judge Kearns didn't buy that at all. Yeah. And Colander is very clear for decades. Colander is very clear. You have the right to uh, refuse and ignore a request without fear of prosecution. Okay, so so you have, have stated in, in in a couple of instances here about these cases and and that this was decided decades ago and and mm -hmm. this has been the standard and blah blah blah. Um, so and and this may not be appropriate to bring it up and if if not you'll tell me I'm sure or or please do. Um, with the recent Supreme Court decision overturning uh, Roe v. Wade, what is to keep them from doing similar things to stuff like this? Okay, that's um, they're not really equatable. And, and, and yeah, that, and that's, yeah, so, that's, so that's why. I'll, I'll just say all, all the Roe v. Wade basically said is there's no federal protection, but each state decides. Okay, right? all right. And so um, with that statute, if a prosecutor takes a position that is um, foreclosed by binding authority, right? 
if prosecutor takes that position, then you can get attorney fees. Okay. okay? That's, that's the general law. You have to look at the facts and circumstances and see if you meet the application. There's a whole statute and there's, you know, one, two, three, four, you gotta right. meet everything, right? And so you'd have to look at that, but I, I think that's way too far out of what, what we're doing here. For okay, good, no, and I, I just, it, it brought that up because, mm -hmm. you know, they can do this, they can do that, yeah. so. so. Anyway, yeah. is, it, is there anything else that we need to cover here? Because we're getting a little bit short on time. So. Yeah, don't be a jack wagon. <laughs> That goes for police and the people dealing with police. <laughs> and, and just be respectful, right? That's so much better if, if everybody's just respectful and you clearly c communicate. And, you know, if, if there's, you know, a, a legal fight, then we can do that legal fight. Right. But you don't need to muck everything up, right, by acting like a jack wagon. And, right? and one other quick thing before we get out of here is... Um, you, you had said something um, about, uh, it, and, and I think it was involving a traffic stop, that um, here's, my, here's my license and registration insurance, and I'm not going to answer any questions. Uh -huh. Okay, and so that is, you are within your rights, mm -hmm. just saying, you know, here you go, mm -hmm. do what you got to do. If you give the officer your license, registration, and insurance, right. and say, I don't answer questions, and anytime they ask a question, just say, I don't answer any questions, right? That, that is the very best way to do it. Just respectfully, officer, I, I don't answer any questions. Right. Okay, great. So best way to handle it. Cool. Well, thank you. I appreciate this. This My has pleasure. been uh, absolutely enlightening for me. My pleasure. Uh, and uh, hopefully for you folks out there, too. And uh, there's no doubt in my mind we're going to have this guy back here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, if you have any questions or, or anything, you can uh, contact us here at WWDB TV, or you can contact our Nevada judges. And you'll probably get a better response from them because they know what they're talking about. <laughs> and uh, thank you, John. Stephen, thank you very much. Appreciate and, it. And thank you all for watching, and um, stay safe out there. You're asking if that's a difference, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. What is that difference? The request is um, request somebody for, you know, it could be requesting is for information, uh, de demanding is telling somebody to do something.